Hey, hey, party people. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to start a series on hair. And you're like, oh my God, a series, like a whole, like how many videos do you need to explain hair? And it's like, you know what? It actually takes just one video to explain hair. But previous experience with my classes has shown me that my students love it when I sit there and render every hairstyle under the sun. They get a big kick out of it. And my favorite thing is when students are like, ooh, do this one. Ooh, and how about dreads? And how about dreads in a ponytail? And braids, what about French braids? Okay, because they're different from regular braids. And, you know, and they sit there and I'm just like this little performing monkey, a demo, doing all these hairstyles. And this happens to me in pretty much every single class in like every semester or so. Let's get started. I'm going to demo hair with markers and color pencils today because it's the fastest way to demo it, but there's not really anything about the techniques that I'm going to show you that won't translate to any other medium. My approach and my attitude towards hair rendering is a little bit different from other people's. As I said before, the focus of the kind of illustration that I do is for design communication. And to that end, hair is not a really important thing for me. Hair, uh, Hairstyles communicate the customer and the muse for my illustrations, but it's not the center point of the illustrations because we are not hair designers, we are clothing designers. So it has to look good, but it shouldn't be the star of the show. It shouldn't be a big distraction and it shouldn't take that long. Your focus and your energy and your time should be devoted to designing all the best things all the prettiest things and making sure you're getting the details just right on all the crazy seams and the top stitching and the tucking and the draping and the and so I have a few tips that you need to keep in mind every time you do hair. The first step is think of hair as a shape and not individual strands. Whether your hair is long and cascading over someone's face hair is a shape. You don't want to sit here and do every strand of hair. We don't have time for that, okay? We are not hair designers. So whether it's a little bob on this little, this cute little man child here, It's a shape. Hair is a shape. Ponytails are shapes. Bobs are shapes. Even short hair like this. Is a shape. Big. Floppy bangs over the face. Still a shape. Okay, so don't sit there and I mean, just watching me is so boring, right? And I, I'm not even done with her head. So hair is a shape. Number two, render in the direction hair grows. So if you have a bob like this, you know his hair is falling in this direction. So you don't want to take your marker and start rendering in this direction. Even if you get the strokes, I did, whatever, like, Take my word for it. Most of you, especially like for those of you who have been working with markers for a long time, it might not matter so much. But for the rest of you who are still streaking up a storm because you are still brand new with markers, just do yourself the favor. Get in the habit of rendering in the direction hair grows, in the direction of the limbs, in the direction of the grain line of your clothes. Always, always. Number three, think about, we need to think about highlights and shadows because again, hair is, well, hair is a shape. It's also a form. And so you want to create a three-dimensional sort of shape going on around the head. And so you have to think about highlights and shadows and first shadows. Hair is darkest at the roots. 
And even if you're a bottle blonde, if you're trying to go for a natural look, chances are your colorist will keep your roots a little bit darker so that it looks more natural. The only time that roots aren't darker naturally is when someone's really going for an obviously fake hair color like platinum white blonde or cotton candy pink or something like that where it's like, yeah, we know it's not real hair color. It's also darkest at the tips. And I like to have the tips be the darkest because it looks healthy. You know, when you have split ends, your hair looks lighter and it starts looking a little bit hay texture-y. So when the tips look dark, the hair looks healthier. Like now. Hair is darkest like around the face. So because it's in shadow, like if the light is over here, this part is in shadow. It's There's no light going into your hair. So hair around your ears and around your neck, like the inside of your hair is going to be dark. Where is hair lightest? Hair is lightest where hair curves towards the light. So when you have hair like this, let's say that's where your light is coming from. As your hair curves towards the light, this is closest to the light, this area is going to get the highlight. Let's look at this little haircut. If your light source is over here, this part where it's going closest to the light, this is where your highlights will sit. How do you shape your highlights? Do you have like a big white block? No, because even though hair is a shape, it's a textured shape. And so we're not gonna see white bars of highlights like you would on incredibly shiny fabrics like uh, PVC. So because of the texture of hair, our highlights are gonna be kind of a zigzag shape. And your highlight's gonna sit across the hair. So if your hair is going in this direction, then your highlights are gonna sit across like this. Your hair is going in this direction, your highlights are sitting across. If you have a bun, this cute little girl, and she has a bun on her head. If her bun, if the hairs of her, you've seen different kinds of buns, right? If her, the hair of her buns are going in this direction, her highlights will sit across her bun. If her bun, her hairs are going in this direction, because it got wrapped around like this. If your hair, if your light is coming from over here, your highlight will go across the hair closer to the light over here. Your highlight will sit over here. So those are your basics. Number one, treat hair like a shape, not a million strands of hair. Render with your markers, with your paintbrush strokes, uh, your color pencils, your watercolor pencils, what have you. Render in the direction hair is going, blowing, growing. Hit where the hair is darkest at the roots, at the tips, and on the inside. And then highlight as it gets closer to the light. Highlights hit across the direction hair grows and not along the direction hair grows. And these are the tips that can be used for almost all hairstyles. And in the future videos where I demo for you different hairstyles, I'll show you where there are exceptions to that rule. Like when we're doing black girl hair, super kinky hair, the way highlights work for kinky hair are really different, but we'll get there as we get there in the series, right? So we have this profile bob. And we've done the hair in the shape. I already know that I'm going to render in this up and down direction, which is the direction the hair is growing. And I'm going to have this be the light source. Typically, when I do a profile face, I like the face facing the light. I think it's a prettier look. I mean, unless you're doing that whole like, oh, my customer is super mysterious and likes to be in shadow. I don't know. Whatever. So your light is facing this way, and so your highlights are going to be up top, like kind of around this area, and then 
the roots, the tips, and this inside area is going to be dark. Always test your markers before you start or consult your marker charts. I like this one. Whenever I do charts for hair, I like to layer the color pencil I'm going to use and the marker I'm going to use together to see what that looks like. I'm going to use a brush tip because I do like using brush tips for hair. I can get those nice swishy strokes. And to do the highlights for hair, I like to leave the white of the paper. If you use a white gel pen or white color pencil, charcoal pencil, white marker, what have you, to put highlights on top of hair, it doesn't look like hair. It looks like, you know, the person was, you know, priming some canvases and got gesso in their hair. Like, it just never looks like a natural hair highlight. So, I'm gonna, there's my roots. And yeah, I'm gonna cross into the highlight area a little bit. And I'm going to, you know, rendering up and down the direction of the hair, leaving that white zigzaggy bar for highlights, but filling in the tips and the roots. You may have figured this out by now, but marker colors, they get darker as you keep layering it. And so I'm leaving, you know, I'm doubling the ink over in some areas to get that color variation. You can always tell a cheap dye job when the color is like seriously like all one block color. You want to have some of the highlights, natural highlights and low lights. Oh my God, I'm using the wrong side of the paper. <sighs> if you were in my class, you'd be busted for not telling me. All right, and then once I have the basic color down, I'm going to take a color pencil and I'm going to darken the roots and the insides and the tips, and then also give the hair some texture, but I'm not gonna render every single strand. I'm just gonna darken the tips, pull some strands through for texture. And it's okay that some of my pencil lines go outside the bob. Like people don't have helmet hair. I mean, okay. If you're going for like a 1960s Vidal Sassoon thing, then okay, maybe you can have like a perfect Peggy Moffat helmet. And this is the problem when like, you know, all this like costume history, it's like every time I say something, I already can think of an instance where that would not be the case. And it makes me crazy. <sighs> Whatever. So, you know, when I say these things, I'm just talking like 99% of the time. All right, the number one rule is make it look good. So if you're gonna do helmet hair, you know, a la Vidal Sassoon five point star, just make it look good. Tips, and then I'm gonna make sure that in here is like way dark. But did you see how fast that went? I wasn't trying to be all careful and draw every strand of hair. And, you know, I'll be honest, I've seen illustrations that do that, and they're beautiful. I've seen some really beautiful, meticulous, probably took an hour just to do one side of her head illustrations, but that's really not our goal, right? Like, you can do that, and it's fine, whatever, but that's not our goal. Boom, there you go. It's a beautiful, shiny, swing it around, you know, shampoo commercial ready hair. Because that's the goal, right? Like, these girls... They should look like they have amazing hair. They should all be, they should look like models ready for their shampoo contract. Fast, quick, simple, straightforward. This is the style of hair you want for your customer. Moving on to the more important stuff, the clothes, right? 
So that's the end of this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want alerts for the next in the hair series. I'm going to do one on straight hair. I'm going to talk to you about bobs and bangs and ponytails and wavy hair and Sailor Moon hair flying in the breeze. I'm going to do a video on curly hair and wavy hair and kinky hair and afros and dreads. And I'm going to do one all for guys where I talk about mohawks and facial stubble and beards and body hair. Yeah, because not every model has to be perfectly manscaped. Body hair is hot, if rendered correctly. I'm going to teach you all those things. So stay tuned. I'm going to post a bunch of hair videos in the future. All right. See you next time. Hey, hey, party people. Welcome back. This is the next installment of my hair series. The first installment goes over the basics for how to do 99% of hair renderings and the reason why I approach hair renderings the way I do. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch that first because everything in this video will make more sense if you watch that first. So now that we've gone over the basics, I'm gonna demo some hair for you guys. So as usual, if you guys have seen my basic marker rendering tutorial, I will link it below if you have not, um, you know that when I do marker renderings on marker paper, I like to A, test for the right side or the wrong side of the paper, B, make a marker chart of the colors that I'll be going over and layering them together to see how they work together. C, draw on the wrong side and render on the, on the right side with my markers. So I drew some basic hairstyles and now I'm gonna render on the right side. I like to use a scratch sheet because some of the marker will bleed through and I don't wanna waste a brand new clean sheet of paper. So rule number one, address hair as a shape. And as you can see, I've drawn all my hairstyles as basic shapes and not individual strands of hair. The second rule, render in the direction of the hair grows. And then I'm gonna leave the white of the paper for highlights. So for this one, let's say this is my light source. And so I'm gonna do my roots. My highlights are gonna be here. And my highlights are not a big blocky shape. Rendering in the direction hair grows. And then I'm gonna do another highlight here. mind I'm gonna do another highlight on the top but not as big as the other highlight So rendering in the direction hair grows, leaving white of the paper for the highlights where the hair would lift up and curl towards the light. And then I'm going to take a color pencil and go ahead and test your color pencil right on top of your marker and see if that's an effect that you like. I like that better, that's more subtle. So I'm gonna get in there at the roots. And I'm gonna, you know, give some wisps so we don't have helmet hair. I'm gonna add the texture. I'm gonna make the tips darker. And I'm gonna make the insides darker because it's away from the light. I'm gonna take a soft lead pencil and just punch it out 
some of that texture and the hairs. Right? So that was pretty quick, right? The whole point of the, the, the style of rendering is to make it pretty quick. And you see you have this dark, so you have some depth where this is the inside, and so it looks 3D. And then the hair with the highlights and the dark roots, it looks shiny. She is ready for her Pantene contract. Yes. So let's do some bangs. And remember how I said that highlights go across the direction of hair and not along the direction of hair? Because if you have bangs like this, and your hair is going in this way, you're not going to highlight along that. It would just look like a skunk stripe, which would be cool, but not what we're going for right now. So you highlight across, and then you know you highlight in kind of a zigzag to accommodate for the texture of the hair. I did this one with the chisel tip. This is a chisel tip. I'm going to do this one with a brush tip. So you can go with either for beginners, for hair, and fur, which is basically hair, I recommend the brush tips. So again, we're going to, and we're going to give me those wisps. Let's say your highlight source is over here. So I'm going to do the highlight bar across the bangs, but make them slightly bigger on this side because that's my light source. Go ahead and use, maximize this pretty bouncy marker tip to create the hair strokes. You know, I think of marker as a quick drying paint and I use the marker tips like my brushes and maximize on the brush strokes. So this marker, this cocoa bean color, is pretty dark, so I'm gonna punch it up with some black. Again, dark at the roots, little center part in her hair. Dark at the tips, always rendering in the direction hair grows. And add some wisps so she doesn't have helmet hair. And then make sure, little heart-shaped bob with little pointy bangs. When you have pulled back hair like this one or this one, I wouldn't concentrate so much on giving major highlights. Like something like this where, yeah, the hair is going in this direction, so your highlight needs to be in this direction, but because this area is so short, you wouldn't really see a lot of highlight. So I wouldn't worry about that so much. Again, rendering in the direction here goes. Again, rendering in the direction the pigtails are sprouting. And let the shapes be a little bit organic, because that's hair, right? That's the beauty and the annoyance of hair. It'll freaking move. So always test before you work on your final. See, if I went here, the hair would look brown. If I went here, her hair would look more ruddy. So the pairing of the marker and the color pencil can really impact the outcome of your hair. So again, like the roots. And I'm going to make this side darker because it's away from the light. And then I'm gonna kind of make sure that highlight remains there. So you see that this is the light source. This is darker, this is darker, this is lighter, this is lighter. Ponytails again are just another shape. You see this like platinum hair. And yeah, I can give her a tiny bit of a highlight. You have a little bit more room to work with. Much like how roots of hair and tips of hair are dark where it gathers together, whenever you have hair gathering together, like at the base of a ponytail, you want your hair to be slightly darker. So I'm gonna move my highlight down here. I'm gonna have a highlight here. And then I'm gonna have another highlight here. And then the tip is gonna be dark. Notice I'm not just like laying down the color like this, okay? 
because it just doesn't look like hair. It just looks soft and flat and matte. And that's awesome for some things, but not necessarily for hair. It loses the vibrancy and the texture. And remember how I said you don't want to add highlights with whites? Now here's a white marker. And that just looks like she has paint in her hair. It doesn't look like natural highlights. Same with if you use dry media. You know, this is what I would do if I wanted to add a skunk stripe to her hair or add grays to someone's hair. Like I have, like I don't really dye my hair, so I have some random grays in here. And if I wanted to emphasize that, I would sharpen the hell out of a white pencil and I would put those in. But it doesn't look like highlights. Add some wisps. You know, if you're looking, going for a more subtle look, you could have left it before I added the pencil. If you want something that looks more punched out, go ahead and add the pencil. And I'm using fairly realistic hairstyle colors, but there's nothing stopping you from doing any of this in crazy cotton candy Sailor Moon, anime, whatever colors. But here's the thing with that is, for designers, when we're working with hair, hair is a part of the whole package and not the standalone piece. And if you're doing portrait illustrations, then yeah, maybe hair is going to be more important. But when we're doing our design illustrations, you don't want people to look at your design boards and and focus on the hair. Hair is just part of the package. And so even if you want to do crazy green hair because that's your customer. You know, your customer lives in manic panic colors and is always gonna have some ridiculous hair ombre effect with giant uh, splotches, whatever. You know, whatever it is, maybe that is your customer, but you have to present it in such a way that it doesn't take away from the designs. So yeah, you could do, um, you know, huge swirls of magenta hair, but Make sure that works with everything, you know? If you're a designer like Betsy Johnson, where it's like huge splashes of color and, you know, candy cane stockings and, you know, yarn, like crazy hair accessories and models are doing cartwheels on the runway, then yeah, big swirls of magenta hair will work. If you're designing for someone more like Giorgio Armani, where grayish is the uniform everywhere, maybe the magenta won't be as welcome. Hair is fairly easy, but when you're practicing hair at home, and you should be practicing, just keep in mind that hair goes on bodies. And so go ahead and draw some with a body like this and practice rendering around the body. I'm gonna keep that kind of dark, because it's in the back. So these are gonna be light and in the front. That's in the back, that's in the back, that's in the back. No, that is not armpit hair. Constantly rendering in the direction the hair is growing, going, waving, blowing. I had a student once who was obsessed with Sailor Moon. She always had these like really feminine, elaborate hairstyles. That's cute though. You know, number one rule, just make it look good. So you're going right up to that pencil line, but you're not, you're gonna make it look like it flows behind. Questions, comments, leave them below. If you want an alert for when I'm going to upload the next video where I cover curly hair and wavy hair and kinky hair, afros and dreads, hit the subscribe button. Until then, practice. Remember, I am not made of magic, I'm made of practice. Practice, practice, practice. See you next time. Hey, hey party people, welcome back to the hair series. How many have I done so far? I don't know. I can't keep track. Whatever. I did a bunch of these. I'm going to post the links 
of the previous videos in the info box below. I highly recommend that you watch at least the first one, the one on hair rendering basics, because if you don't, you might get a little bit lost in the instructions. As you know, when I do marker renderings on marker paper, I like to marker on the wrong, uh, I like to draw on the wrong side and marker on the right side. Today, we're gonna go over some curly hairstyles, curly, wavy, kinky hairstyles. So basically, when we did our hair renderings, it was treat hair as a shape, not as a million strands of hair. Render render in the direction hair grows, you know, hit the highlights across the direction of the hair in a zigzag shape. Hit the darkest parts of your hair at the roots, at the tips, and on the insides by your neck and ears. And we're gonna add another one to that. So basically, when you're treating curly or wavy hair, what you're gonna do is you're gonna highlight as it curves towards the light and then darken the hair as it recedes from the light. So highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, like so. Just like we've been doing with gathers in, in fabric, you're gonna do the highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow with hair. So we'll start with something easy, something um, just softly wavy. And again, I like the brush tips for hair renderings. It helps with that light, feathery, you know, marker stroke that I like for hair. So start at the roots. Let's pretend there's your light source. And then this part is gonna be highlighted. And then as it curls away from the light, there's no highlight. This section is going to get the highlight because it's curving towards the light. And then this section is going to be away from the light. And then this is another highlight towards the light. And then the tip. I'm going to take my color pencil. Oh no, that's too dark. Mm, it's kind of purpley. Ooh, I like that. Test twice, marker once. Cut twice, uh, measure twice, cut once. Test twice, marker once. Test twice, paint once. That's like everything. Never be in such a hurry that you just m keep messing up and have to redo it because that's, that's slower. It's faster to do it right the first time. Okay, and make sure in the areas that curl in that you have the darkest spots. And then the tips, the roots are very dark. Spaces around the neck and the ears are really dark. The highlights, it's broken up with some pencil line and some marker strokes, but the highlight is very obvious where they are. And then again, add some wisps so it doesn't look like helmet hair. Right? And then you have nice, gentle, wavy hair. Now when you're doing curly hair, anything curlier, it's the same, but just more highlights and more shadows. Roots, let's say your light source is over here. So there's your highlight, and this is where it recedes. Keep those light feathery strokes and keep Rendering in the direction hair grows. And so again, as it recedes, it's going to be dark. And leave that highlight there. And then this is going to be highlight. I don't know if you've noticed, but I make a lot of weird noises when I render. So highlight. And then close darker 
And then again, since your light is on this side, my highlights on this side are a little bit smaller, a little bit more subdued. And so, yeah, you know, it does take longer than the straight hair because you have to, you know, consider all the highlights and shadows, but it shouldn't take that much longer. It should still be pretty quick. And then with light hair like this, I like to take a pencil and just kind of punch out the shape. So with the highlight and the shadow, you're really creating those curves and making your hair look shiny and glossy. When you have something like finger waves, finger waves like those old school like 20s, like Great Gatsby era uh, hairstyles, they don't really stick out from the hair. They're more like close and curl along the hair. And so I would, this is her light source. You know, I would create a highlight along the top. Like along the top of her head. But I wouldn't highlight the curls because they are flat against her head. Right. I'm still going to render in the direction of my hair so that I'm getting those marker strokes to inform me of the hairstyle. Add a little bit of texture. And this hairstyle doesn't have a lot of wisps because it's like kind of gelled really close to the head. Shirley Temple curls. So basically Shirley Temple curls are the curls that are look like tubes. They just look like cylinders, and you know what happens when light hits the cylinder. Here's your highlight, here's your shadow. So you're going to do that with each ringlet, but, you know, softly, more organic. It's not literally a tube. So since your hair is going this way, your highlights are running this way. Ew. See, one of the reasons why I like drawing on the wrong side and rendering on the right side is I don't have to worry about pencil lead getting into my marker tips. But should that happen, you need to take a scrap and wipe it off. Again, I'm rendering in the direction of the hair. Cute little bangs. And I'm gonna have the highlight across the bangs. Is coming around, it's all very little women, Shirley Temple, maybe a little little house on the prairie. <laughs> cute, right? That is cute. I need to do more kid renderings. I forgot how cute and fun they are. Let's do an afro. The curliest of them all. Now, for the afro, what I like to do is I like to very lightly draw in a basic shape for the fro. And then I like to take a brush tip and I like to stamp it in. So you're just giving me this like super curly texture. And the way fro's work is the hair is densest the closer it is to the head you know much like any other hairstyle you know hair is denser and closer together closer to your head and then it kind of feathers out and so you need to make sure that the the hair close to the head is really jam-packed and then you can get a little bit looser as you render out
I still don't want you to, I don't want you to make me a lollipop. That's really nice for really graphic styles of illustration, but that's not, I mean, unless you're really going for that for the whole look, super flat and graphic, but don't give me any lollipops. Then I would take my black color pencil and I would fill in some of this stuff with the hair texture. And you know, I've seen loose froze that are more about like tight curls. And then I've seen froze that really kind of do look like a lollipop. They're like perfectly groomed and rather stiff. And I've seen all different kinds depending on, you know, the person's personal style, the person's personal style. I need to go read a thesaurus. I kind of like the looser look, just looks kind of sexy, like this a little bit, you know, bed heady. And then when you do the skin, whether you do it before or after, you want to make sure that the skin kind of goes in here in the gaps so that you don't have. I know, I know. I, pr I keep promising you face videos and I will give them to you. I promise. In a minute. I'm, I'm kind of really enjoying the hair thing right now. And then the last thing I want to do is crimps. Okay, crimps. <sighs> crimps are kind of nasty looking. Ugh. Can we just agree never to make crimps fashionable ever again? Can we just do that? Like, do I have to pass around a petition? I will. I would totally do that. All right, so waves, curls, ringlets, afros, fun stuff. Doesn't take that much longer than straight hair. Um, just a tiny bit more effort. But once you understand the basic rules of hair rendering, piece of cake, practice, come back, hit the subscribe button so you get an alert for my next in the hair series, which is going to cover cornrows and braids and dreads. And then the video after that is going to be facial and body hair and super short hair, things like that. So I will see you next time. Go practice. Hey, hey, party people. Welcome back. Today is our next installment in the hair series. And today I'm going to go over all kinds of short hair, pixie cuts, pompadours, uh, facial hair, mustaches and beards, stubble, um, jarhead hair, body hair, whatever, all kinds of short hair. We'll, we'll say like four inches and shorter. Now I'm rubbing my hands together a lot because it is so freaking freezing in my studio today. Just ignore me, okay? Ah, I'm gonna die. It is freezing. I need like 18 space heaters, okay? Someone sent me a space heater. If you are unfamiliar with my hair basics, I highly recommend that you watch that video first. I will pop a link to that and all the other videos in my hair series in the info box below. That first video will go over all the basics in depth, but real quick as a review, in no particular order, one, hair is a shape, not 11 million strands of hair. Number two, hair must be rendered in the direction hair is growing, going, blowing. Never ever draw a cute little bob and then render it horizontally, okay? That's not how your hair grows. Number two, hair is darkest at the roots, at the tips, and on the insides where it is in shadow. Hair definitely has highlights because we are fashion designers and we render, you know, shampoo contract ready hair, right? Don't hate her because she's beautiful. Can I keep that or are they going to sue me? Right, maybe I'll edit it out, whatever. We're going to put in highlights and we're going to put highlights as hair curves up towards the light. And highlights go across hair, not along the hair. So if your hair is going this way, highlights are running across the hair. If that was too fast for you, go watch another video. I really go all in depth on all those things that I just listed. 
For most short hairstyles, like stubble, like facial hair, like, uh, you know, when guys got that like close crop thing going on, who does that a lot? <sighs> Who's that? White guy. Oh yeah, Jason Statham. You want to start with the skin tone. You always want to color pencil on top of marker because if you marker on top of color pencil, the waxes, the oils, what have you, from your color pencils will clog the tip of your markers. So you always want a color pencil on top. Those of you familiar with my rendering methods already know that I like to draw on the wrong side of marker paper and render on the right side. Let's give him his uh, shadows. So let's say his light source is over here and the back of his head is in shadow. You know, inside of his ear, under his jaw, his Adam's apple, back of his neck, under the clavicle, dark side of his arm, back here, armpits are always dark, his pecs, In between his pecs, where his sternum is, his other armpit, his abs. Students in my in real life classes know that I am always telling them to never shadow their skin tone with color pencil because it just looks like body hair. Because that is literally how I do body hair. I take a color pencil and I shadow lightly on top of the skin tone. So now that I have my skin tone, I take my color pencil and let's say I want to give him some chest hair. And of course you can add more if you want a hairier dude. Oh, I forgot his nipples. And I would give him a happy trail. You know, body hair is uneven, especially chest hair. So maybe it wants to be a little bit darker in the center. And this is exactly how you would do stubble anywhere else. So let's say he's got a five o'clock shadow going on. The thing you don't want to do is create lines. Like you don't want to do anything curly. You don't want to do anything too zigzaggy. You don't want it to look like, you know, long, sparse hairs. I don't really think that that ever really looks attractive. Okay, maybe he has a little bit more hair in his cleft. The only time you want to, you know, really tight curls like this, you know how that has a different look. You want to do this kind of thing if you're doing really short black men's hair because their hair is actually like really small curls. But for most Caucasian dudes, not so much. So there's your guy, all covered with chest hair and stubble on his head and, you know, five o'clock shadow. You guys are too busy having sex for him to shave. Whatever. Let's do a pompadour. So, you know, you're going to have highlights and shadows in hair. Um, but because the hair is so short, 
and the space you have in which to work is so small that, you know, everything's going to be smaller. Your shadows are going to be smaller and your highlights are going to be smaller. Your hair is going this way. So your highlights are going to sit across. Always rendering in the direction here is growing. Really feather light strokes. Build me some beautiful hairy texture with color pencil. Nice strokes going in the direction hair is growing. Swept up and away. You know, the roots are a little bit dark. This side is a little bit darker than the other side. This is a more subtle look. If you want it a little bit brasser, bolder, you know, I would add a few touches with a pencil. Shiny Pompadour. He's like a blonde Elvis. Wait, did Elvis have a widow's peak? What about a pixie cut? Pixie cuts are super, super short, guys. Their pixie cuts hair is so short that there's really not a lot of room for highlights to even form. Ah, so stinky. All right. So yeah, I always push the skin into the hair so that there's some overlap because that's real life, yo. Skin, face, hair, overlapping. Pixie cuts, you know, they're so short. They just kind of stick out and then kind of like get pushed like kind of forward and then maybe up a little bit and then kind of Usually there's like that center little cowlick and then, you know, the hair gets pushed down and then towards the front like this, your marker strokes are going to reflect the direction your hair is going. I really prefer the brush tips for this kind of work. Like you can do it with the chisel tips. But why make it hard for yourself? Constantly flicking these short little flicks forward. Oh, she looks like she has a receding hairline. Let's give her a little bit more. <laughs> Oh, you know, I really wish I could pull off short hair. I can't. I really can't. This is not my modesty. I don't have any modesty. Trust me. So cute. And then again, I'm going to take a color pencil that is a shade darker and just kind of add some texture overall. Still continuing to render in the direction hair is growing. And then using this color to do my eyebrows. Right. Oh, that's so cute. When you have a hairstyle like this, it's like a really short bob. You know, you are definitely going to see highlights. So let's pretend our light source is over here. So our highlights are going to sit across the hair. Our highlights are going to be, you know, in a zigzaggy shape. You don't want a highlight bar, you know, because 
you want to respect the texture of the hair and how it moves around. So our highlight is going to be a zigzag shape. It's not going to sit across, but kind of like wrap around the hair. So there's one highlight. And then I want to create another one over here. And then on this side, it's away from the light. So I wouldn't exactly give it a really strong highlight. And yeah, I'll cut through the highlight a few places. And then sometimes I add a darker marker to emphasize the dark areas, roots, tips. And then, of course, again, I like to add the hair texture in, especially with short hair. I make sure that I do a few like loose strands so that it doesn't look like helmet hair. With the pompadour, I wasn't so focused on giving it loose strands because usually pompadours are like super gelled. You know, you can give a few loose strands if you want, but something like this. No, you wanna. <laughs> Bedhead is sexy, guys. And again, I like to add a few pencil strokes just to make it pop a little bit more. You know, I don't always do that. I definitely do that when I want something to really pop. And then with beards and mustaches, it is similar to a pixie cut in that the hair is not long enough to catch a highlight. You know, not like a really visible highlight. And mostly beard and mustache hair. It's a little bit gnarlier than the hair that's on your head. Uh, partially because that's the way our bodies are built and partially because we don't use, like, con like guys don't use like hair conditioner on their beards. Well, I feel like they should, right? I mean, if they want it to look nice, like so many guys have like beards are huge right now. Um, oh, what's that term? Lumber sexuals. Lumber sexuals are trendy right now. You know, everyone's got a giant beard and a man bun. Again, I'm going in the direction hair grows. And again, I'm not going to leave highlights. Are you sensing a theme? So yeah, basically, you know, learn the basic concepts and you can just keep applying them over and over again. I made them a little bit straggly. Unless you have black hair, most mustaches and beards tend to be darker than your head hair color. Although I have seen some random guys who have brown hair with like a full on red beard. I'm like, what is that? Like our bodies are very interesting. Hmm. So I like to take a darker color for the beard texture. So yeah, it is all beards, mustaches, and man buns. Oh, don't tell me you want to know how to do a bun. All right, all right. Not 
into short hair category, but I will do a man bun for you. Like, it's different from a ballerina bun. Like, nice ballerina buns, you know, they sit on the top of the head. They usually wrap either around like this, or the hairs are going like this. And so, you know, your hair's going in this direction. You have a highlight going across the hair like this. It's nice and neat and beautiful. Or your bun is wrapped in this way. Your highlight is running across the hair in this direction but you know most dudes they don't put on a ballerina bun okay like most dudes they'll grow their hair until like it's about eight inches long and they'll they'll like they'll put a little ponytail in it and they'll loop it over and it's just like this teeny tiny little bunlet most man buns I've seen the back of the head is shaved and you'll see some stubble you know, the top part has grown super long. And then the, the, the bun is actually not even a bun. It's just like looped over. And it doesn't really flop around because the hair is not really long enough. Usually kind of dirty, greasy, pulled back. And then it's got this little nubbin. It's got some bottom parts sticking out. You know. And then again, your roots are a little bit dark. And then it's following this kind of loop look and then it just kind of sticks out on the bottom here. And then this back part is just stubble on skin. Ugh, I just broke my own rule. If that ever happens, just make sure you wipe your nub clean. With black men's hair, you know, obviously if their hair is an eighth of an inch long, it's just straight and all over, and you can treat it like that. Uh, once they grow it out, just even a little bit, it starts to curl, right? And so if you're going to be doing that, then you want that that look of the tiny, super close to the head, tight curl. Make sure your curls stay super tight. You don't want it to look like that. And, you know, the edges have to be super clean. So what did we learn today? That sometimes when your hair is super, 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 super short, you're not gonna have much in the way of highlights. But nonetheless, you must always render in the direction the hair is going. We have learned that mustaches and beards have coarser hair than the hair that grows on the top of our heads. And mustaches and beards typically grow in a little bit darker than the hair on our heads. And you should illustrate as such. When you have shorter hairstyles, your highlights are going to be a little bit smaller. And that man buns are uh, messy. And really not for everybody. I mean, the next video in the hair series is going to cover super curly, kinky, braided, super textured, dreaded, cornrowed hair. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below. If you have a specific hairstyle that you would like me to shoot a tutorial on or explain how you would do it, send me an image. Email me an image to teaching at zoehong.com because 
pictures are worth a thousand words. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey, party people. Welcome back to the hair series. This is video number five. Uh, the first one covers the basics on how to render hair and my approach to hair. Number two is straight hair. Um, number three is curly hairstyles, including like waves, finger waves, afros. And the fourth one was how to approach super short hairstyles. And in this video, we're going to go over super curly, uh, braided, cornrowed, and dreaded hair. Do, 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 do. I don't know if I'm going to have very many more hair videos after this one. Um, I'm thinking... Uh, of doing one more where I talk about how to render hair with paint, how to transfer these skills into uh, paint media. And uh, I can't really think of any hairstyles I haven't gone over, but if you have any specific hairstyles that you would like to see rendered, drop me a comment below. Really the best way to help me help you is to um, include a link to a picture, like a decent sized picture. So you don't have to try to explain what kind of hair you're talking about. It's like this hairstyle, how would I render this hairstyle? Okay. And then I'll do that in a future video. So for a lot of these styles today, especially cornrows, it's going to be important to color in the skin tone first. So I've gone ahead and drawn in the styles colored in the flesh tone and put in my shadows. If you are confused about how to place shadows, I'm gonna drop the link for my three kinds of shadow method video. So let's start with the easy one. Braids are easy. There are so many different kinds of braids out there, you guys, like uh, regular braids, French braids, Dutch braids, twists and then like I mean I googled braid just to like kind of take a look and there's just so freaking many but the basics is always render in the direction hair is growing and make sure that each section of your braid looks 3d do you remember my quilted fabrics video where each section of the quilting had its own highlight and shadow because each one was its own separate 3D shape. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll drop the link below. But each section of the braid is 3D. So if this is a section of the braid and this is my light source, then I'm going to have a highlight here and then this area is going to be in shadow. This area is going to be tucked into the shadow because the way it's squeezed into the twisted braid. So what I want to do is, you know, in each section, always have a highlight at the top part where it crests up so that it looks 3D. This hair is going in this direction. You know, if you do a braid like this where it's just partial hair, make sure your braid ends before the rest of her hair because the twisting action is going to just shorten the overall length of her hair. Leave some highlights across her hair. Always darkest at the tips, at the roots. And now that I have the basic shape, I'm going to go in with a color pencil and emphasize the braid. Draw the shapes. Keep those zigzaggy white highlights sitting across the hair. And because this is my light source, kind of everything on this side is going to be a little bit darker. Always render in the direction the hair grows. You know, add texture, but don't feel like you need to draw every single strand of hair. You can add a couple of loose strands. 
so that she doesn't look like she has helmet hair. Right, and there you go. And you can do that with any braid style. Just make sure that each section looks like its own 3D shape, and you're constantly rendering in the direction the hair is going, and you hit the highlight and the shadow for each piece. When you're doing cornrows, cornrows, wow, okay. You're not going to take this 3D approach to cornrows because cornrows are so tiny, y'all. You do not have time to sit there and draw every single, and try to highlight and shadow every time. No, nobody has time for that. Mm -mm, no. I mean, yeah, those illustrators who are really into like every single meticulous strand of hair. I've seen some really gorgeous illustrations like that. That is not our goal. We are designers. We put some hair there so we know what our, our customer looks like and then we move on. So I'm going to show you guys two different cornrows. One that are just like tight against the head and then ones that are looser and uh, like loosen up and end in curls at the bottom. Now, whenever you're gonna do cornrows, you wanna like design the layout of the cornrows, okay? You'll see a lot of different kinds of designs out there, like which direction the braids are going. I've seen them go down like this, going across like this, you know, looping around. Like I've seen some really crazy cornrow patterns. So you're gonna design that first. So here's the center back of his head. I'm gonna like loop this in here and I'm gonna put in this design because I can. And like this at the nape of his neck, there's his neck, there's his ear, there's his jaw. And yeah, it is a challenge to draw and render darker skin tones. Just because when you're working with these kinds of details, it's not as visible, but whatever suits your customer, whatever's gonna make it look good. Like most of you who are familiar with me like knows that anytime I do really bright colors, really white, like pale colors, I love to put them on black models. They really look the best. So I'm going to take a skinny black marker and I'm going to put in the rows and make them as neat and even as possible because that's the way it's done. Make sure they stand out a little bit away from the head. Now you know why, put the skin tone in first. Yeah, they have to stand away from the head a little bit because they're 3D, they stick out, you know? So you wanna see that, um, that bump. And then I'm going to take my black color pencil and I'm gonna give it some little zigzags so that you can see the the roots of the hair, you know, being pulled into the braid, right? Because if you have a braid, you know, here's your cornrow, and you're gonna see those little hairs getting pulled into the braid, right? So you want, you're gonna see those little zigzags. Ta-da, there you go. So. On this one, I'm gonna do a hairstyle where there's lots of cornrows. They're all stacked on top of each other so you don't see a lot of the scalp. And even if it is all black, I'm going to use three different colors to kind of give it some depth. Otherwise, it's just gonna look kind of stacked on, you know, just kind of like a mess. I'm gonna start with this cocoa bean dark brown color and I'm going to lay down the initial braids and then I'm going to create the shape and then I'm going to curl the bottom as if the braids only came halfway and then the rest was released. I've seen girls with this hair. It's really pretty. So we're going to bring this down and we're going to curl this up. Shorten this as if we're getting tucked behind her ear. All 
I'm then going to take this soft black and I'm going to add some. Corners are sitting on her head and the braids are coming undone and the curls are coming down her back. Because her ear is right here. And we like tuck these braids behind her ear. And there's her jaw. Little eyelash. And then I'm going to take my super, super black. So yeah, it's not about seeing so much of the scalp, except on the sides where you're going to see those uh, individual ones. But really like adding layers of the colors so that you see some depth and you're starting to see some of the individual cornrows as opposed to the sort of like bleh, black. And then I'm going to add some of those hairs on the sides here like this. I'm going to add some curls in here where there are just like a few loose tendrils. So that, yeah, it does look still mostly black. All right, let's do some super curly hair. Super curly hair is messy. And you're never gonna, I say never, I say mostly, you're not gonna see like super curly hair that's so perfectly neat and precise. So what you're going to do is you're going to give me like sections of super curly hair that are kind of casually tossed about. Section of super curly hair, section, 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 kind of like slanting, slanting, kind of zigzagging across the head so that it looks a little bit tousled. And then you're going to take the color pencil and you're going to just mess everything up some more. A section of curly hair and then I'm going to do another section of curly hair. And then here's another section of curly hair. Here's another section. Here's another section. And another section. Section, 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 section until you're starting to get curls all over the place. While that's nice that it shows the direction everything is going in, that's a lot of white space. So I'm going to go in with this darker color, slightly darker color, and fill in some of these spaces with more of these curly sections. So again, these colors that are similar to each other, they're creating depth and defining the shapes, in this case, defining the curls, kind of minimizing the white space while still allowing some to be there so that it looks like there are bits of highlights just sprinkled all across the curly hair. And then I'm going to take this uh, color pencil and burnt ochre and add the hairy texture, emphasize some sections. Now add some tendrils, always rendering in the direction here is growing. Sometimes I'll add a few pencil strokes in here super curly, tousled hair. Let's do some dreads. I would say there are two basic categories of dreads. There are the little tiny kinky twists. I mean, and they can be skinnier and longer, but they're, you know, generally on the shorter side and much more narrow and tightly twisted. And then there's the thicker twists matted hair that you know they're thicker they tend to be longer and then they like kind of taper to nothing because of, of course hair is denser closer to your head and then as you keep twisting 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 there's like less hair to twist cover that so it doesn't smear so i'm going to take my brown and i'm going to get in there at the root not worrying about highlights because dreaded hair is matted and twisted so there are no highlights and I'm going to sweep that one dread with one marker swoop and make sure that I pick up at the end to create that taper like this. I 
So try to keep those cylindrical shapes. And let them taper down to nothing. And then I'm gonna take my color pencil and I'm going to kind of reinforce these shapes so that you're seeing the individual dreads, but then also adding that diagonal twisted matte texture. And then back here, as you know, hair is always darkest because it's in shadow in the back. But otherwise, you're not gonna see like highlight shadow or a lot of distinctions like that. And sometimes you see them curl a little bit towards the end. And then for the little short skinny twists, you're gonna first start off by doing the basic shapes. And yeah, they're gonna stick out some. And then I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna fill in some of these gaps. I'm gonna treat it like those cornrows where, you know, you want some depth and definition of individual pieces. So you're gonna go ahead and do some light black and some dark black. And, and these styles, you know, that's why it's so much easier to have the head and the skin tone in so that, you know, when you're putting in all these little kind of like almost spikes all over, you kind of know the general shape of the head kind of wrap it around. And then I like to add on some texture. You know, these little twists, they don't have the wispy, sharp uh, ends like the longer dreads do. They're kind of blunt at the edges. So you wanna help create that textured, sort of twisted, blunt shape on these. And there you go, super curly, braided, corn road, half corn road, and dreaded, twisted hair. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer than, you know, like a straight bob, but God, that's boring just doing straight hair day in and day out. Don't you wanna like design cool clothes for everybody? I do, I want everybody to wear my clothes. If you have a question, check the info box first. Maybe I've answered your question. Still have a question? Drop me a comment. Want to see me do a specific hairstyle? Drop me a link to an image in the comments. You know, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, blah, 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 whatever. Check out the other hair videos. Good times for everybody. Da, 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 da. I'm a little bit hyper today. Okay. See you next time. Hey guys, so today I have another subscriber request video all about hair done with color pencil. I've basically been doing just subscriber request videos since December. It's awesome. I, I love the polite subscriber requests. Yeah, right now the queue is about 15 videos deep. Like I did a spreadsheet and everything because I love Excel spreadsheets. That being said, feel free to continue to make requests. Just keep in mind that I always go in the order of the date requested. And so if you don't see yours for a while, you know, it's, I'm just going in the order and there's just a lot of people ahead of you. You know, some people are lucking out, like they'll request things that have already been in the queue for a while. So, you know, some people will be like, oh, I got mine early. And it's like, hey, Merry Christmas. But hopefully in the meantime, you'll keep watching other videos and find them helpful. Just one more little note before we get started on the tutorial. I just want to say thank you to everyone for all the kind words left here and on my Instagram and other social media. 
it's really hard to have a shitty day when you guys are so nice to me. And uh, yeah, I've been really tired lately. School's kind of crazy. And, you know, I've got some other projects and stuff, obviously working on the book. Um, but, you know, I love teaching and I love when people say, hey, you know what? What you said to me was really helpful and it just makes my day. And so thank you for all the compliments. And uh, yeah, just keep practicing and uh, keep doing the work, you know? All right, enough of the gushy emotional stuff that I'm not really great at. Color pencils. So this video is gonna focus on hair renderings, but I will introduce to you guys a few color pencil techniques that will work well for things that are not hair. Number one, let's talk about our materials. So today, I have a bunch of color pencils in a lot of kind of more natural hair colors. The two brands of color pencils that I use the most often are Faber-Castell Polychromos and the Prismacolor Premier. The Prismacolor Premier pencils, they are kind of mid-range price-wise and, uh, you know, reasonably priced. And their leads are really soft and creamy and they blend well and their colors are quite vibrant. And I think excellent for their price bracket. The drawback to these is because the lead is so soft, they snap quite easily. And so, you know, you have to be careful not to drop these on the floor. And you have to be careful that you don't uh, sharpen them too aggressively. Faber Cassell has a couple of different lines. They have a classics line and they have a polychromos line and I like the polychromos line. It is a little bit more expensive, but the color payout is nice. The blendability is really nice. It is a superior pencil in my opinion. Of course, that's just opinion. The lead doesn't break as easily. So it's a sturdier pencil. It ends up lasting longer because I don't have to sharpen them over and over and over again because the lead broke, right? And I go over color pencils more in depth in my Intro to Color Pencils video, and I'll drop that link in the info box. When I am working with dry media like color pencil without marker, without paint, I like working on Bristol. Bristol is a nice sturdy paper. It's got a smooth surface, not a lot of tooth, uh, so that it won't you won't have a bumpy texture interfering with any sort of color or pencil blending. I always like to cover other work so that, you know, my hand is not smearing all this pencil when I'm working on the left side. So the thing about color pencil, and this can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you are, is that it's a slow medium. Okay? It, you have to take longer to build up your color with color pencil. And for people who are used to marker or need to work really quickly or they're doing a lot of rough gesture and they need a lot of color payout like immediately, color pencil is not going to be ideal. For someone who's still trying to work on creating shapes and shading and want and need more control in the beginning, this is an excellent learning tool. You know, for the most part, I use it because... I love the dry texture that I can achieve with a lot of different texture renderings like with fur and fuzzy knits. So as some of you may know, I have a whole series of hair videos and the first one goes over the basics of hair rendering for any media and any hairstyle. The basics are these. Number one, hair should be treated as a shape and not 500 million strands. You're not gonna sit there and draw all the strands, but you're going to think of hair as this bob shape or this long wavy shape. Number two, render in the direction that the hair is going, growing, or blowing, okay? You don't wanna have a bob like this and then color it in horizontally. You'll ruin the effect. Use the brush strokes or the pencil strokes of whatever medium you're using to help illustrate the hair texture. Number three, hair is darkest at the roots, at the tips, and inside around your face and neck where hair is in shadow. Also, hair is darkest 
when it's wavy and it's going away from the light. So if my light source is over here, then as it goes out, it catches the light and as it recedes, it gets the shadow. Number four, highlights. Highlights appear as hair curves towards the light. Highlights appear across hair, not along hair. So if my hair is going in this direction, then my highlight will sit across the width of my bangs. So here's my hair, front view face, a short bob with bangs, and you're going to render in the direction of the hair. My light source is over here, so I'm gonna have a highlight over here. I'm gonna have another highlight over here, and then I'm gonna have a highlight across the bangs. I like to start light and build slowly. Anytime I use a specific medium, I really try to exploit the advantages of that particular medium. And the beauty of color pencil for hair is that it's got kind of a fuzzy, hairy texture to begin with. Also, it's a slow medium, so I can build slowly. I don't know, coloring with color pencil is really zen and fun. curving across her forehead. So I'm leaving those highlight shapes, right? And now I know some areas need to be a little bit darker, so I'm just gonna keep going, add more color. You know, I always like to add a couple of loose strands because I really don't like helmet hair. But you know, that's my own personal preference. And then I'm going to take a black and I'm just going to add just a few strands to kind of emphasize so it doesn't look too much like a block of brown. Emphasize the texture. And there you go. Hair as a shape, the bob shape, rendering in the direction the hair is going. So down, down, slightly rounded around the face over the forehead, highlights as it curves towards the light, as it curves towards the light and the bangs. Shadows at the tips, 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 tips. Shadows at the roots. Color pencil is also great if you want to do a hairstyle where there's a lot of colors. Like, you know, there's some people who deliberately do a lot of like either ombre effects or they, you know, put in a lot of highlights and lowlights so that it's like a, a lot of different shades of honey brown. And color pencil is a really great way to show that off. So I'm gonna do this hair and I'm gonna just have like a lot of fun bleached bits. So I'm going to start with my middle color. And again, I drew my hair in the basic wavy shape that I want. And I'm going to, you know, my light source is over here. So I'm going to have a highlight here. And then as hair curves towards the light, I'm going to have another highlight here and here and here, here. I'm going to apply the color where there's no highlight. And just, you know, slowly build the color, rendering in the direction hair is going. And then I'm going to take a few strands and just pull them all the way through. You don't want your highlights to just look like a block of white, okay? Because anytime you do highlights and shadows, you have to follow the texture of what it's highlighting and shadowing, right? And so smooth surfaces like glass, satin, they're going to have smooth, flat highlights. And anytime you have anything textured like hair, you're going to have textured highlights. And then I'm going to take my darkest color and put in my darkest areas. I 
I love working with color pencil for hair because then you can give her some proper bedhead, that sexy tousled look. And you know, in here, in the shadow behind her head is where your hair would be the darkest. I'm gonna put in some of this little platinum bits. And then I'm going to take my 2B pencil and I'm just going to run a few strands through, all the way through. Okay. So color pencil is really great when you want to have things that are more subtle and have more varieties of hair color running through the same style. I really love color pencil to create hairstyles that are like really messed up. There's like just little strands everywhere. And that's really harder to get like a subtle messed up, it's st sticking everywhere look with marker. So let's say there's your light source. And you can just get so much looser and messier with color pencil than you can with marker. But again, I'm keeping the general shape of this hairstyle and rendering in the direction the hair would go and making sure that the roots are still darkest and the tips and you're creating that big highlight across this curve of her head. Yeah, these Prisma colors, the color payout is really nice and it's kind of worth putting up with some breakage issues, you know? But yeah, you can't really get this, you know, the subtle gradients with marker. And you know, you can do, you know, all the hairstyles that I demoed in my hair videos with marker, like you can do all those things with color pencil, but why would you use one medium to try to mimic another medium perfectly? Like you might as well use, you know, all the, the best things about a color pencil to create a color pencil unique look, right? Then I'm going to just add this black streak in here because I decided. I also love doing afros and super curly hairstyles with color pencil. Again, I have the basic hair shape in here and I am just putting in these individual curls all over. So like I was using the markers to kind of stamp out the afro shape before, I'm taking this and I'm stamping in clumps of curls. Go in, add some curls. And I'll fill in some of these white spaces. And remember how hair is denser the closer it is to the head. So I'm going to make sure that, you know, I don't really have open spaces around the head so much. And then I can get looser as the kind of the fro kind of grows out. Oh, I like that. When you're doing facial hair, like beards and mustaches, just keep in mind that you need to keep your pencil strokes short because your beard hairs are short. So even if this is a big space, you know, you might be tempted to do the long strokes across the beard, but then it'll just look like he just grew long hair from the top and, oh God, that just sounds so gross. Uh, no, no, don't do that. So remember, render in the direction hair grows and use your pencil strokes to your advantage to create the texture. So you're going to use your little short pencil strokes 
to create the texture of the beard, not try to just fill in the space with long strokes just because that's faster, okay? Keep things nice and short so you can get the texture that you need. Beards don't really have highlights because the hair texture of beards is coarser and then of course that each individual hair is shorter so it doesn't really catch big highlights and so you're not going to have you know this kind of broad highlight across your beard again it's going to look like he has like a weird wig on his face ah stop making me create these visuals in my mind gross now, if you're trying to achieve a look with color pencils where the areas are more filled in, like you don't see a lot of these white gaps, okay, I have two techniques I want to show you. The first technique I'm going to show you is called burnishing. And burnishing is when you take a color pencil and you go over your drawing and you're like pushing the color pencil into the grooves of your paper so that there are no white spots left. Like when you look at something like this, you know that there are all these little microscopic white spaces in between the color pencil. And when you take your color pencil and you really push it in, you end up getting these solid blocks of color, okay? And the nice thing about color pencil is you can make things subtle so that you can create these gradients, you know, just push up, you know, don't do this sort of thing. It's really easy to get this effect when you use a smooth paper like Bristol. When you have rough paper like this, you know, you're going to see really the texture of the paper and you're going to have to go in and really push into it to get the solid blocks of color. But again, you wanna push up so that you have the dark at the bottom and then kind of tapers to the softer look at the top. You don't wanna have a block of dark and then light on the top. You're losing your hair effect this way. So just go in there in the darkest areas and push that pencil color down now that you've figured out where you want your darkest hair, right? And you can see the difference between that and that. Another way that you can create smoother areas of filled in color is to use rubbing alcohol. This is isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, you know, the stuff you get for a dollar at any drugstore with a Q-tip. Now these are the super skinny Q-tips that I get at Muji. I really like the really skinny ones because I can get more control, but you can use regular Q-tips. So here's some rubbing alcohol in the cap. I'm gonna dip my Q-tip in here. And you're gonna add and kind of smudge the color pencil. And you can smudge more the more alcohol you add. You know how I like love the watercolor pencils because I can create like wet dry looks using, you know, little bits of water sprinkled on top. This is like that by controlling the amount of alcohol that I add to my color pencil, 
I can create smudgy, softer looks. Now remember, every time you switch colors, you need to switch to a clean nib. Maybe if you want it more dense and black in the center. You see how it's just softly smudging that? It's not deeply burnishing like I did here, but it is just softly smudging that charcoal or that color pencil around. Ah, that's my favorite little trick. So if you are doing all of your hair and color pencils, you know, the techniques that I showed with the markers are easily translatable. So if you're looking for how to do braids with color pencil, okay, go watch the video on braided hair and those techniques can just be transferred to color pencil. And then you can try the burnishing, you can try the rubbing alcohol technique to create smudgier, you know, more solid color looks. And that's it. Come at me with your questions. You know, I'll drop you some hopefully helpful links in the info box. And if your question isn't answered there, you know, you can always drop me a comment. That's it. I will see you next time. Go practice. Get off the internet and go practice. <laughs>